Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kana and this is Jar of Fireflies. Here I make videos all about my life as an Orthodox Jewish homeschooling mother of four. And today, we're in New Jersey. All right, folks, yes, we are in New Jersey. Like I said in my last video, I came up here for the Nachyomi Seum and I have stayed because my niece is getting married. So I am just gonna take you along for some different parts of our trip here over the next uh, week or so that I am here. So first stop is I'm here sitting in front of the grocery store because I don't have any coffee where I'm staying. So I'm gonna go get some coffee because that is important. So I'm gonna go grab some coffee and then head back to the house I think most of the plan today is to go shopping, so um, I'm gonna need coffee for that. <laughs> All right, let's go inside and do a little shopping. Okay, so we're here at the aisle nine, which is like the grocery store here in town. And y'all, look at the cottage cheese price. So if you remember, recently in a video, I was at the grocery store in Dallas and the cottage cheese was like eight or nine dollars. So this price is amazing, it's incredible, oh my goodness. Okay, so, all right, I think we've got everything we need now. Let's head home. All right, we got everything we need, so let's head back to the house, drink some coffee, and then go shopping. One of the things that I really need to get today is a gown hopefully for the wedding. I have a dress that I can wear that's nice, but it's like nice and kind of plain. And I am family to the bride, she is my niece, and I would really like to dress really super nice. And there's this whole thing about wearing gowns to weddings. I'm talking like ball gowns with petticoats and hoop skirts and like amazingness. So I'm hoping to at least try on something like this. I don't know, it's definitely a little bit out of my comfort zone. I mean, hoop skirts aren't because who doesn't love a hoop skirt, but like, I don't know, I've never worn a gown out in public, but it would be so much fun. So we are trying to find what is called a gown gamach. And this is basically a place where you can go and you borrow a gown, rent it kind of for a small donation, like a hundred dollars or less. It's amazing. There's also gown rental places where they are purchasing gowns. So it costs a little bit more, more like 250 or even up to like, I've seen like up to like five or 600 to rent gowns, but these are gowns that cost thousands of dollars. So I'm trying to find a place that I can get into today or tomorrow. So hopefully I will be able to take you along to something like that. The problem is a lot of these places don't have websites. So it's not like I can just call up and make an appointment. I'm kind of having to wait till I get here. Except the wedding's tomorrow night. So my sister-in-law's helping me and we'll see what we can do. We're also just gonna do some general shopping because I need some new shirts and this is the place to get them. Okay, I'm gonna go home and drink coffee. I feel kind of wired without it, but that's okay. I have not slept that much. And, and let's get this day and week started. All right, so we were here at a secondhand store and we're gonna check out and see what we can find. Oh my gosh, we got so much clothes for my daughter. I found two things that I like. I'm still thinking about whether or not I'm gonna get them. But for now, I want to look at some clothes and see if there's anything for the boys. The boys are not here with me to tell me what they like, but I might be able to find them something. They have a limited selection of boys' clothes. I feel like there's a lot more girls, but see what we can find. Okay, so we have finished the shopping. We're gonna head out, I don't know what we're doing next, but um, yeah, so for $100, I just got my daughter a whole new wardrobe and I got me a few things too. So I'll definitely be coming back to this store anytime I come up to Lakewood. <laughs> Okay, so we are here in a gown rental place. This is so much fun. 
Um, the gal who runs this wasn't able to come in person because she just had a baby, but she was kind enough to let me come in and shop on my own. So I'm here with my sisters and nieces and my daughter, and we're gonna try on some dresses and see if something works. Okay, so unfortunately nothing worked out here today. There was one dress that was like kind of a maybe, but you know, it didn't, I just, I don't know. I, I didn't quite feel like it was quite what I was looking for. And then there was one that was like, I loved, but it didn't fit. If it would have fit, I would have bought it. I would have brought it home. So we're gonna head out and just go to some stores, maybe shop around and hopefully I can find something somewhere else. Otherwise I'll just wear what I brought. Okay. Okay, so it is the end of the day now. I'm back at my sister's house. I went to so many stores this afternoon and tried on more dresses than I can even count. But let me tell you, I went to another gamach tonight. Wow. She had the dresses arranged by size. I was able to try on several dresses and choose my favorite because so many dresses were working for me. So let me show you what I got. Okay, so I have a dress. I kind of don't want to take it off, but I need to. So I'm gonna take it off, hang it up, and I'll put it back on tomorrow night when I go to the wedding. Okay, I'll take you guys to the wedding tomorrow night. Just gonna film a little bit because I really want to be there and be present and be part of the wedding and have fun, but I'll definitely share a little bit of it with you guys. So, yay, have a dress. Okay, I just wanna pause here for a second and talk about this whole gamach thing. Okay, so first of all, it's like you get a phone number like you might randomly get a phone number from either another person or from like some chat board online or something like that. You call the number and you're gonna like get a voicemail, right? And the voicemail is gonna be like, you're gonna come to this address, but only come after dark at this time. And you have from like 8 p.m. until like 8.45 p.m. And you can only park here. And if you need to, you can park down here and then like walk down. And then you're gonna go down to the basement behind the side of the house and like knock twice. Okay, not really, you're not really knocking twice, but like, you know what I mean? It's like going to a speakeasy during Prohibition. Like, it's crazy, but I love it. <laughs> and the reason is it's because these are in people's basements. They're run as like a chesed, as a kindness. So like for this dress that I got, I paid $100 to borrow the dress. Like that is it, that's it. Nothing for what I got. So literally like I get there, I park where I'm supposed to. I have from like eight o'clock till 8.45 that night to go there. I go down to the basement, I go through the door and there's just like racks of dresses. And there's like a little office where we can, where like all of us are changing to try on dresses. And the whole experience, I just absolutely loved. Uh, it was definitely a new experience for me. I have never experienced anything quite like that before, but it was really super fun. And yeah, so that, I just had to jump in and say that. All right, gonna close for the moment here, but stay tuned because I'll be back in a few moments with the wedding. Okay, it is the next day now and we are heading out to the wedding. No, I'm not dressed yet. We have a long drive to get to the location where the wedding is, so I'm gonna get dressed once we get there. All the rest of my family though is here and they are ready, so. That is basically what's happening now, and I will film more when we get there. Okay, so I made it here to the wedding hall. I got dressed. And put on a little makeup, not usually my thing. I didn't put my glasses on yet. I think I'm probably gonna go put them on in a second though. I was thinking about maybe not wearing them, but I'm going to. So, all right, I'm gonna go be with family and catch you guys in a bit. There is my daughter. She also got her dress from a dress gamach. Uh, she is matching her cousins, which is super fun. Here's a little bit more of the location. It's just a really, really pretty building. Okay, so I put the glasses on. It's definitely like super chill here right now. When I first came out and was talking, I was like, feeling like I didn't know what was going on. I was about to go in somewhere and I wanted to say hi real quick, just in case. 
But anyways, they're doing some photography right now. They're taking pictures of the bride. And probably pretty soon we'll start the family photos. In the meantime, we're snacking. There's some chicken nuggets and fruit and drinks and things. Uh, a couple other little snacks that we can eat here since the meal won't be for a while. And we're just kind of hanging out with my mother-in-law and getting ready for the wedding. It's so exciting. I'm really so happy, I have to say, that I got a gown to wear instead of just a dress because all of the other ladies are wearing gorgeous gowns and I would have looked incredibly casual next to them even though my other dress is super nice. Okay, so this room right here behind me is the Yehud room. And this is a room where Ashna's couples will go after they get married to go in and spend some time alone right after the ceremony. I'm Sephardic, so this was not something that we did, but it is a custom that Ashkenaz Jews have. Other things that you will find here in a Jewish wedding hall are the mezuzos. A mezuzah is a piece of parchment that we have some different verses from the Torah inscribed on and we affix those to all of our doorposts. I do have a video all about this that I will link to in the description box below for you guys. And another thing that you will find at a kosher wedding hall is the washing station. Because this is a big celebratory meal, it's served with bread. And before we eat bread, we do a ritual hand washing. So there are stations set up here in the dining room where people can wash their hands before they sit down to eat their meal. Okay, so another thing that you will find in a kosher wedding hall is of course the kosher certificate. Whoa. This tells us that the place is in fact kosher, that it's under supervision, and we don't have to worry about anything we eat here, that everything will be kosher. Okay, so there's also a room over here labeled Hassan's Tish, or as we would say, Khatan's Tish, or would we even say Tish? Probably not. But basically that is a room where the groom, the chatan or chasen, will go and they, I'm not really sure because I've never been to one, but if I find out more information, I'll tack it in here later. I found out more information. Okay, so tish means table in Yiddish. So basically what you're saying is this is like the groom's table. So, so the bride and groom still aren't seeing each other at this point in the wedding day. So this is a place where the groom can go his male relatives, friends, the rabbi, whatever, everybody can go in there. My son told me there were cookies in there. I'm sure that there were some drinks. So it was just like a place for them to kind of hang out before the ceremony. Not everybody does this, but I think it's pretty common. It's been at all the weddings that I have been to. And while all this is going on, the bride is in another area with her mother and her mother-in-law, her female relatives, her female friends, all of this. They're in just another area where the bride can greet her guests. Okay, back to the wedding. Here is the area where the bride is going to be during the Khatan's Tish, the Khasan's Tish. So it's kind of like a stage and there's chairs all along the side for her sisters, future sister-in-laws, mothers, mother-in-law, all of that sort of thing. So this is where she's going to be and you can see they're about to do some more photography there. Okay, so I super hate filming in public for these things. But I'm here and I'm trying, but I did step out for a minute. So basically everybody is in this room back here behind me and there are tons of like appetizers and all kind of food that people are able to grab and eat. There's a few little tables in there. We snagged one and yeah, amazing food. There's everything from different kinds of meats to fruits to drinks to uh, sushi and fish and all kind of salads. It's really, it's quite a spread. But I also know we still have dinner after this. And there's a band in there, there's live music. Yeah, so I just stepped out to tell you what's going on right now. So the next step right now, right now what is happening is the bride is sitting there in the front and she's up there with her mother and her very soon to be mother-in-law. And she's there's like a line waiting to say Mazoltov and to get a bracha, a blessing from her, which I will do too. So that's going on. And that'll go on for maybe another 30, 45 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. 
and then we'll go in to the hoopa to the actual wedding ceremony which is going to be in a different room and i hope you guys can even hear me because it's really loud in here anyways so i'm gonna put this down go back in enjoy the wedding and check back with you guys at some point <laughs> okay Okay, so what is happening now is the Bedeccan. So at this point, the Hassan's Tish, the Khatan's Tish, they have all left that room and they are dancing and singing around the groom, escorting him up to his kala, his bride, and then he is going to pull the veil over on her. It's the veiling, and this whole thing is called the Bedeccan. At this point also, the Kala's father, the bride's father will come and give a blessing and perhaps her father-in-law or her rabbi, you know, important uh, men in her life will come and give her a blessing as well. This part is fairly brief, just for a few minutes, and then all of the men will escort the groom back towards that Tish area again so that he can get ready for the ceremony itself, which will be starting momentarily. All of the guests went in to sit down where the chuppah will be, where the actual ceremony will be, and the event center staff quickly started getting the room turned over for the dining hall. Okay, so I'm out here probably officially missing the chuppah now. The bride just walked by and she's going in there to get married and I'm out here because I have a toddler, but that's okay. It's a little quieter out here and it's all good. Yes, the obligatory bathroom selfie. Can I be any more obsessed with this dress? I don't think so. All right, now the ceremony has officially started and luckily I could really hear everything at least, even though I couldn't really see anything, but I could hear from the lobby just fine and see a little bit, which was really nice because Mr. Firefly is reading the ketubah. The ketubah is the wedding contract. Okay, so that was Mr. Firefly in there. He is reading the ketubah, which is the uh, marriage contract. Uh, and that is part of what they do under the hookah. So he's up there doing that right now. And uh, yeah, so the wedding is happening and I'm out here watching the toddler fall on the foyer. But he's having fun. He's made a couple of friends because there's some other kids here. All right, so at this point, the ceremony is over and this is everyone singing and dancing and escorting the Khatan and Kala, the groom and the bride to that Yehud room. Now, this couple is Sephardi, so it wasn't like an actual Yehud room for them in the sense that an Ashkenaz would go in there, an Ashkenaz couple would go into the room alone. So I'm not sure exactly how they worked it out, but probably someone else was in there with them and it just gave them a few minutes to rest and eat something before they go out. But this did give them a few moments of quiet and less people before they go in to the whole dinner and dancing and celebration. All of the wedding guests just sort of mingled around while the staff continued working on getting the rooms all turned over so that we could have the meal and a dance floor. This is the table for the chatan and for the kala to sit at. They will sit in the front of the room together. And the rest of the seating is all men on one side and women on the other. The dancing is also separate, men only dancing and women only dancing. For the same reasons that we have separate dancing for men and women, I am also not 
going to be showing any dancing here in this video, but just know there was a lot of dancing. It was so much fun. And yeah, I'm just not gonna show any here for the privacy of all of the women there who were dancing separately from the men. We also did henna here at the wedding. So all of the girls, all of the women, the ladies, everybody came over and put a little henna on their hands. We ran out of ribbons, but we started using napkins. And these are the special cookies that are traditional for the henna party. As the night wore on, we just continued to dance and have a fantastic time. And Baby Firefly got super duper tired. Okay, yes, I know. I have filmed these little additions just about everywhere I possibly can for this video, but that is okay. Anyways, the wedding ended shortly after that, or at least for us it did. We went home, we were very tired and had a long drive ahead of us. The wedding was so beautiful, super fun, and that's it. That is the wedding. So thank you all so much for coming along. I hope that you enjoyed learning about gown gemachs and Jewish weddings, Sephardi traditions, and all the fun things. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, and of course hit that subscribe button because I would absolutely love to see you here again. And let me know in the comments below if you have been to a Jewish wedding before or not, and if what you saw today was anything like what you experienced. All right, and with that, we are done. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in my next upload.